Today's project is a project I've been wanting to start for a while, just been a little distracted with the holidays as well as getting my new lathe up and running. So what I got here is a Boy Scouts original hatchet, not in the original case. This dates back to the 40s. Let's take a closer look at it. So it actually works pretty well and it must have a split in the handle or something which we'll take a closer look at here in a minute, but it feels really good. So whoever did this repair did a nice job of making it functionally work well. I actually did chop some nice chunks of oak I have for my smoker and it worked great. Still has a pretty good edge on it, but it is really beat up. So it's going to take some work to get it down to uh, a really nice finish. As you can see there, it says Bridgeport. And then there's some writing in here um, that I can't completely make out yet so let's get her apart and see what it looks like inside let's take a look at the handle here so as you can see the damage to this side is pretty extensive probably going to need to put a new piece on both sides as it turns out looks like there might have been a hole drilled through there that was not not part of the original design i'll have to figure that out but i thought that this was kind of neat some sort of like foam weather stripping type thing was molded up really compacted in there and wrapped with all that electrical tape to make a pretty good uh, in the moment fix but we're going to make this look better than that we're going to make it look better than new here i am on my 1950s craftsman drill press and i'm just using a senna drill bit uh, to drill out those rivets and i was curious to see um, what those rivets look like because I was going to have to find a solution to replace them. And here I'm just finishing them off with a regular drill bit once I got the bulk of the work done. And they were, they were in there really good and it was uh, holding really tight. I had to pry it off here as you can see. And then once I kind of got it lifted off, I then had to reposition it into the vise and finish it off with a hacksaw. Just cutting those last little bits off. Then over to my 1980s Delta bandsaw. Um, in this project, I used some tools that really kind of for the first time, this being one of them and the router being the other. And what I did here is I traced out the handle and I tried with the bandsaw to cut it as close as I can, um, but it proved to be um, difficult to match it up to the handle that way. Um, it did work the bandsaw really well and I was able to cut it really well, but uh, what you'll see I did later is I actually cut the handle uh, slightly bigger than it should be, bolted it to the ax and then ground it to size and that seemed to work a lot better. And here's a quick update of where we are. Very lightly done on the wire wheel. Just enough to kind of see there where it says, be prepared. That's the Boy Scout motto um, is my understanding. As you can see, this thing is really beat up. So I'm gonna have to use a flap disc on that, try to get that all really nice. Um, some marks in here looks like there's three deep marks there i'm gonna have to see how deep i could go there and not take out the logo there because that's the whole point of this but like i said this thing's still got quite an edge on it and so that's just a quick update there i'm gonna get that onto the wire wheel and sanders and everything else and here's the handle that was still intact that i've been using for my outline and there's the broken handle and there's my two pieces that i have so far and this is just going to be really tough as you can see because i'm going to have to figure out a way to really sand this down and get it to be kind of like this because it's actually thinner over here and it gets thicker um, then i got the contours i got to deal with then i'm going to have to break out the router that i recently picked up and i've never used before the one that's on the table so i'll be shocked if these are the only two handles i have to cut um, on the band so that I don't screw them up and have to make uh, several more but we'll see how it goes let's get to it and over to the jaw horse I mean this thing's great for holding things I mean you'll see as I go through here I could hold this axe at any angle 
it has the cushion grips doesn't mar anything and it really locks it in there and i actually you'll see in some other parts of the video i use it for some other um, holding functions and here i am with just uh, it's a pretty worn out flap disc i want to say it was like an 80 grip uh, but it was worn down and it's taken it off but i probably spent a good i don't know 45 minutes to an hour and then this was the toughest part i had it all pretty decent but just working around that logo and holding my breath trying to get those little pits around it and then blend it in that was probably the longest and toughest part of it Next, over to the fiber wheel, and this really helps blend in a lot of those marks left by the flap disc, and that wheel there that I'm using is definitely a coarser wheel. It takes off a little bit more metal and leaves a little different finish, kind of like a rough finish, uh, still polished, like a rough polish, and then this one gives you a finer, takes out those scratches, and just had to work that for a while. And then, next up was over to the polishing wheel trying that'll really take out the final abrasions and whatnot and i worked this for a while and it seemed pretty good but i just wasn't thrilled with the way it came out you'll see what i do in a minute here to get out those final abrasions but i wanted to point out that you can see i'm working on i clamped it down on the side of the toolbox tray and that seemed to help keep the dust uh blowing outside and here it is the random orbital sander i think i started with like maybe a 300 grit and worked my way up to an 800 grit if i had a thousand i would have did that um, and then here i am working those handles um, this ultimately proved not to work like i mentioned earlier uh, because I just screwed them up <laughs> doing them this way and I found an easier solution here which I'll show you in a minute it was just too tough to try to get it exactly to match up and then cut those um, grooves with the router um, so I ended up making about four total see there it was just tough so when that didn't work I just cut some new ones um, as close as I could got them as close as I could and then I just mounted them onto the axe and to do that i used a transfer punch i got those ones from pittsburgh they seem like they work pretty well the reviews on it was really good uh you just don't want to wail on those you just make your mark and then you use a regular center punch Then the good old Stanley push drill. Love when I have an opportunity to use this. And this is just one of those projects where it works perfect. Look how it makes such quick work of that. You have great control over it. And the benefit of mounting it on in advance like that is once you grind it in position to the exact size, that's where your holes are going to go. You could just finish those holes off all the way through in the drill press. And there's a look at that new Klein screwdriver I recently picked up. Love the handle on it. Works great. And here's what I'm talking about. Once I figured out this was the right way to do it, look how it's just eating up that wood. Nice and easy. I will have to go over the handle again with the fiber wheel because it is getting a little bit of an abrasion. But you know when it's matched up, as soon as you start to see some sparks, uh, that it's hitting the metal. And that was... The game changer for me nice and easy grind it right down into position so you live and learn with these projects making it easier for the next time and living and learning is what i had to do i had recently picked up this router table i think for 50 bucks it's in one of my videos and I had to get it up and running. I had to figure out how to use the bits, what bit was the right size, how to use the adjustment, set the depth, even how to operate it um, with the collet. That's a real pain in the neck. Um, so I'm glad, you know, that was hours and hours, but I'm glad I did it and it'll help me in future projects. All right, making some progress, getting through the home stretch here. Um, these were the two that turned out to be no good. I just could not get those grooves right. I could not just get, like I was trying to just nail it on the saw. So much easier once I put them on here, grinding it down right in position, did one at a time. Um, right now I have it dry fitted in place. Feels pretty good, but not thrilled with the hardware. 
Um, once it is permanently set in position after I stain it and everything, I think I would lay a little epoxy in there. So I'll keep you updated on that. Um, but here's the hardware I'm thinking of using. It's a heavier hardware. Um, this is the one I used and it's just kind of chintzy and it doesn't have a long screw that it's really going to bite um, as you can see there and um, it's already giving me some issues just even in the dry fitting stage where it's kind of stripping out and everything. I think I'm going to make that hole a little bigger. I'll have to drill through the steel a little bigger and use this heavy duty hardware. I'll cut it to size and hopefully it doesn't look like overkill, um, but I want it to be really sturdy with some good hardware. And I'm going to return this. I mean, this is $20 of hardware you're looking at right here. This was about 10 bucks delivered for, I don't know, 10 of these maybe, or not even eight sets. And this is another $11 for five sets. So this one I'll probably end up keeping. And, I, and the only reason I'm going to return this one, it is junky. I already stripped out the heads a little bit. Not thrilled with it, even though the size seems to be pretty good. So if they were better quality and these heads held up better, and I felt like they weren't necessarily stripping out, I probably would stick with those. Um, so let me get to it. And that new hardware worked out great. I can't emphasize how much I like it. It really cinched it in there. I did have to drill some holes into the metal, had them, you know, really get a nice big countersink in here to sit these in then after i got those scales in or handles whatever you want to call them they did shift a little bit once it cinched down and i had to go back over this and i just used an orbital sander um, while i had it in the vise and i actually sanded it to fit my hand just really nice so now i'm going to take it off clean it up stain these poly these figure out a solution for this here probably um, some sort of paint in here and then finish it off. Here I accidentally put the camera in slow-mo but it looks kind of cool and I'm just taking out the ground the grind marks that are in there from when I grinded it with the handle on it making it nice and uniform and notice how that jaw horse is such a universal tool and I really like it it's better than clamping it onto my toolbox now is I could just clamp my fiber wheel any of my um, wire wheels right into that and I have it positioned at the end of my driveway uh, at the end of my garage so on a nice day it just blows all that debris outside all right there it is and it's finally done and i am so happy with the way it came out um, let me start with the handle it is just i love it it's so sturdy the hardware i thought was a little bit beefier than um I initially wanted to do but I love it I did not need any epoxy it cinched it on there so strong um, I actually you'll see it later I got some footage of using it and it is just super sturdy I put a little bit of that finish on it first which is the special walnut one coat left it on for about I don't know, I don't know a couple minutes wiped it off so it wouldn't be too rich or too dark let that dry probably a half a day Put a coat of the Hellsman's on, which I love. It's a super heavy-duty type of urethane versus a regular poly. And that gave a nice finish. Did sanded it, put another one, and that is a super heavy-duty coat on there, which should help it. And I also put a coat on the inside of the handle, too. So, you know, prevent it from moisture and everything else getting in there. And then I really like the way this came out, the black here. That, I used just that Rust-Oleum you see over there. And what I did was cut it with some water just to get it to the right consistency. Kind of gave it that semi-translucent look, almost like an original finish. And then finally, the steel. I mean, that is a mirror finish. You could see some striations in it uh, a little bit now because, like I mentioned, I did use it. Um, and just taking a quick look at the back, everything's so nice, everything's so finished. All those nicks that were on here, I was able to take out, I was able to paint the nail puller with the black, um, put a little Scout Crafter red in there, which I think is so appropriate for a Boy Scout hatchet um, for the Scout Crafter Master. So, so cool. Hope you guys really enjoyed the video i know i enjoyed making it took a long time you know it's probably a 15 20 minute video and it took me i don't even know i'm embarrassed to say how long because i had to learn how to use the tools like i mentioned as i went through if some of them were for the first time made a couple set of handles before i got it right if i had to do this again i could do it in a third of the time now that i'm all set 
up. So let's take a look at the video. Uh, before we do that, I just want to say uh, please like and subscribe. Really want to get to that thousand subscriber mark so I could use your help with uh, getting there. And if you'd like a channel sticker, just email me at tomguntools at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. And I should have mentioned, as you can see there, I have an oil stone. One side's fine, one side's coarse. And I sharpened up the blade with that in a nice circular pattern, starting with the coarse and then into the fine. And as you can see there, I hit it pretty good. And that handle felt solid. And it split through there pretty nice. I didn't want to scratch it up too much, though, before I put it on video. Uh, as you can see there, it sliced it right off. And it, that was frozen wood. It was frozen solid. And it did a pretty nice job splitting through it. And I normally would not uh, be using a log that big. I'd use just some small wood uh, for the smoker or just some kindling type stuff where I'd just be chipping off little pieces. But I put it to the test there and it, it worked pretty well for frozen wood. And the other thing I didn't mention is I actually coated it with a rust preventative. And I'll share that with you in a future video. I think I'm on to something pretty new and cool. So stay tuned for that.